In this example video, we're going to look at brief exercise 626, and we're going to put together a production report using the weighted average method. So it tells us that our company manufactures bicycle frames in two departments, cutting and welding, and they use the weighted average method. Manufacturing costs are added uniformly throughout the process, and the following are the cost and production data for the cutting department for October. So when they're talking about costs that are added uniformly, that means that our three levels of product costs, so direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, are added in each department. It doesn't mean that the same amount of materials, labor, and overhead are added in each department, but there are all three components that are continuously added throughout this process. So they tell us that we have units in beginning work in process, we have units that we have completed and transferred out, and we have some units in our ending work in process, and they give us some cost. So our cost of getting those 4,000 units in beginning work in process 40% completed last month cost us $32,000. And then the costs that were added in October, so our materials, our labor, and our overhead that we added to the process during this month, in total cost us $608,000. So they want us to prepare a production um, report for the cutting department. So this report is broken into unit information and then cost information. So the first part looks very familiar. It's a physical flow schedule, pretty much. We're going to look at how many units we need to account for and how we're accounting for those units. So units in our beginning work in process, we said there was 4,000 units in beginning work in process. And then units started. Again, remember, we want to look at how many units did we actually start in production in the month of October. So we had 27,200 units that were completed. But we know that that includes the 4,000 in beginning work in process because we typically would complete what we've already have in process. And we have 8,000 units in ending work in process. Those are units that we started in the month of October but did not complete in the month of October. So that means we have 31,200 units that we started in the month of October. In total, that means we have 35,200 units that we have to account for. So how are we accounting for those? The units that are completed, we have 27,200 units that we completed and transferred out, and we have 8,000 units in ending work in process. So that means in total, we've accounted for those 35,200 units. We now wanna look at our equivalent units. And remember, we're using the weighted average method. So when you're using the weighted average method, we only ever look at two components when we are doing equivalent units. How many units have we completed? And what are the equivalent units for our ending work in process inventory? Remember, every completed unit equals one equivalent unit. So that means we have 27,200 equivalent units for our units completed. And then for ending work in process, remember we have 8,000 units in ending work in process, but they're only 60% completed. So when we're doing equivalent units, we take how many units we have in ending work in process, and we multiply it by how complete we were able to get them during that period. Basically, based on the amount of effort that we've put in, all of the inputs, our labor, our materials, our overhead, if we only focused on trying to complete more units, we could have fully completed another 4,800 units, but instead we started 8,000 and we got them a little more than halfway through that process. So that means in total, we have 32,000 equivalent units that we have for this company. So now we have to look at the cost information. So our cost information was provided to us. We had 32,000 in cost that was associated with getting our beginning work in process units a certain percentage through in the prior month. And then we added another 608,000 in product cost. So 32,000 in beginning work in process, 608,000 in costs that were added. So in total, we have to account for $640,000 in cost. When we're utilizing the weighted average method and we want to figure out our cost per equivalent unit, we take our total cost that we have to account for, which includes the cost that we added in the month and any beginning work in process cost, 
and we divide it by the total number of, and this is important, equivalent units, not total units to account for. Remember, this is a rate per equivalent unit. So our cost per equivalent unit is $20. We now want to show how are we allocating out that $640,000 between the units that are being transferred out and our units in ending work in process. So goods transferred out. So our rate is $20 per equivalent unit. And we know that our equivalent units for units that are completed, and those would be the only ones that we would be transferring out, are 27200 so we are going to transfer out $544,000 in cost with those 27,200 units that we've completed in this cutting department. Goods and ending work in process. So ending work in process, again, $20 and it's per equivalent unit. So we have to multiply it by the number of equivalent units that we have in ending work in process, not total units. So that means with those 4,800 equivalent units that we have in ending work in process, we are going to allocate $96,000 in total cost for that. So in total, we're going to transfer out 544,000. In total, we're going to leave $96,000 here in this cutting department with those units that are still in process. And in total, this is important, we have allocated out our total cost that we had to account for. If by accident you take that $20 per equivalent unit amount and multiply it by the actual number of units in ending work in process, in this case 8,000, this number will not match, and that will be an indicator to you that you've done something incorrect, and typically it's in that ending work and process piece. So just be mindful of that. Make sure you add back to that cost that you need to account for.